I'm on a mission to find the cheapest property here in Calgary. Calgary is becoming the number one choice for so many immigrants. It's no surprise, finding a bargain in Calgary is like finding a needle in haystack. But here's the deal, I think every challenge is an opportunity. For those who don't know me, my name is Mohit and I'm a local realtor here in Calgary, but this video isn't an advertisement. I generally want to buy an investment property and you're coming along for the ride. Will I have any advantages in buying being a realtor myself? I don't know yet. I don't even know if I'll be posting this video. No point in posting if I don't find something that's actually really cheap. So if you're watching this, I probably got lucky. The goal is simple, beat the odds, find that hidden gem. You see, every home buying process starts with a game plan, lots of research and very clear search criteria. Lucky for me, I go through this with my clients like every single day. So here's our game plan. We are looking for properties we can buy and flip. In this market, that might come with tax implications. I'm keeping that in mind already. So if the numbers don't make sense, we have a plan B to simply keep it as cash flow. Long-term rental or short-term rental, I'm open to both. Tips for any investor watching, guys, always have a plan B. There's actually three things to look for when buying your property. Location, location, and location. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. It's actually location, product, and budget. I'm setting my search criteria to 60 kilometers from Calgary. That's as far as I would go. Product, of course, I'm looking at the cheapest price point, it's gonna be a renovation project. That's okay. Only thing is when renovating, I don't like dealing with managements or housing associations. So no condos, townhomes, or anything with a HOA or a condo fee. This leaves us with a clear option, a detached property. Or maybe if the numbers look right, even a duplex, maybe. And lastly, price. Ideal goal is to stay under 100,000 of my own money and I'm not getting any construction loans, so whatever the rental cost is, would be coming out of my down payment. And with that, we are ready to go house shopping. Now, we are in a market where it takes time finding the right home. We have low inventory, and whatever comes on the market sells very, very fast. So we have to be prepared to act right, act fast, and sometimes even write an offer with no condition, no financing condition, which can be very, very risky. Hey. Well, I'm willing to take that risk. You know how they say, no risk, no Rari. Rari as in like, you know, Ferrari, Ferrari, Rari. No? Okay. All right, guys, forget about everything I just said. We actually found a property. It came back on the market. And for some reason, it's not selling. I don't know why the pictures are from winter. So I'm gonna go back to the office, call the sellers and find out more info. Well, I thought I had patience. Clearly I don't. So we pulled over and we're calling them right now. Hi. Hey, this is Mo. Well, just to respect their privacy, there's certain things I can't show. Good thing is we got permission to shoot at the house. So plenty of footage coming up. Sounds good. All right, well, it was nice chatting with you and uh, we'll stay in touch. Oh, okay, yeah, you take care, bye-bye. Okay guys, so amazing seller. Everything looks really good. Just like I thought it is a renovation project, which is why they don't have any interior pictures. But we'll go in tomorrow, first thing tomorrow morning, go take a look and let's hope for the best. Hopefully it's not raining tomorrow. I'm actually super excited for this one. The sun's shining, it's a beautiful day and we're all buckled up, ready to go. Funny enough, we are right under that 60 kilometer mark we initially set up on our radius. So it's about a 44 minute drive, which honestly I don't mind. If I was in Toronto, we would be spending 40 minutes just in traffic. So it's not a bad drive at all. It's actually my first time visiting this town. So it just has brand new to me as it is for you. What I really like so far are the wide open roads, a lot of plain field, a lot of acreages, a lot of stuff happening. And it's not as empty as I thought it would be. There's a fire truck passing by. And it's, it's a pretty decent town. Well maintained. We even have some street lights here and there. And so far, I'm liking it. It's pretty good. Guys, guess where we are? Bicycle! Okay, I gotta tell you, I love the small town vibe. Time just slows down, you enjoy and you truly live every single day. 
Guys, it looks like this location could really be the one. There's so much things happening here. We have a auto body shop right behind me. There's a laundry max right over there. There's a car wash, there's a bar. We are right on the main street, so it's a absolutely great location. You see, this property is not just a house. It's honestly a huge blank canvas waiting to be filled. Like, take a look at the huge lot. That's not just one, but wait for it, two lots. Yeah, you heard me. This property comes with not one, but one and half lots for the same price. Now I know what you're thinking. Why the half? Well, my friends, that's a story for another day. A mystery waiting to be unrevealed. Yikes, so looks like a lot of old windows there. This is Apram, the realtor representing me in this transaction. One of my team members, a great person and an even better realtor. I know you're probably wondering, Mohit, why do you need a realtor when you're a realtor yourself? Well, you see, as a buyer, you don't have any costs associated with using a realtor. And with my busy schedule with my own clients, YouTube and all kind of stuff. Well, if I can offload any part of my work, why wouldn't I? All right, now you can kind of already get an idea of what kind of project we're working with. We honestly spend a lot of time here going through every single nook and cranny. So to really be on the same page, let's walk through the property together. So walking into the property, we can see there's no dedicated pantry or a closet space. So you're walking straight into the kitchen and what might also be the dining room space. And our goal here is to get rid of this tub wall. We'll still keep the structural wall and we'll walk into our living room space. All it really needs is a little bit of makeover, some ceiling lights. Now walking into the washroom, this is where the disaster really starts. You can see almost everything needs to go from the tub to the shower and even the walls. I don't even think that's working. And yeah, the toilet, that definitely needs to go. But hey, for some reason, we have a disco ball that comes with the house. I have no idea why you need a disco ball here, but hey, you have it. Moving forward, let's look at the vanity which looks like it was replaced at some time in its life. And we also have hardwood flooring. And usually I love hardwood flooring. I would keep hardwood flooring wherever I possibly can. But this one is starting to show its age pretty dramatically. So we'll probably keep something like this. And again, this would need to go. So this is the first bedroom and that's the second bedroom. And yeah, there's a pathway to walk through both bedrooms for some reason. Our closet space right here which again we can just restore and obviously the walls and everything else would most likely need to be replaced and maybe even the windows. Now let's actually walk through the other bedroom. I'm not gonna take the passage but you can see it's pretty much the same size as the first bedroom and this is the window that we saw walking from outside which is actually broken and that covers up almost the entire layout and yeah so the place is kind of a mess but hey let me actually even show you guys the basement which is not really a basement but it's still worth checking out guys we're walking into the basement here and it's crazy how low the ceilings are like i can't stand straight this is me standing and this is a basement and it goes even lower it's surprising to see how these older homes, they don't really have a real basement for some reason. And we see houses of today with like eight, nine foot ceilings, which is completely crazy. Well, technically this is just a crawl space and I always like visiting homes, even if the basement is not done, because it tells you so much about the home. It tells you about the furnace room, the heart of the home. It tells you about the foundation, the structure, how strong it is. And even with these older homes, the craftsmanship might be a lot different. There's a very, very high slope right here. And then it kind of tilts back down over there. I'm not sure what this was supposed to be, but at least we have a light bulb. So that right there is actually the sump pump. We don't know if it's in working order. We'll probably have to get a property inspection. Usually I always recommend my clients getting a property inspection done, but buying this property at this price, we already know it. there's problems with it. So there's honestly not a lot we can do. Yes, the property needs work, renovations, repairs, and honestly a little bit of love. 
Right now, it does not present well, but as an investor, you have to look beyond that. Right in front of me is the main door. The kitchen's right behind me. I'm thinking about tearing that kitchen down and replacing it with a brand new kitchen, putting an island right in the middle, and we'll be taking out this wall on the side, leaving the structural wall. That gives us an open concept floor plan. The only thing we can't really change in this house are the ceiling heights. They're not very high ceilings, but for a house built in 1940s, it gets the job done. I personally see potential with this charming small town vibe, the price and the location. Funny enough, I was actually trying to find the population of the place and there's nothing online. So I decided to sit down and I hand counted every single house on Google Maps. We have a total of 525 homes, if you needed that info. As proud as I was for counting every single house, I'm more proud for actually getting into this investment property. Out of these 525 homes, you'll find the perfect blend of everything from grand homes to more modest ones and even brand new developments. That tells me the place is growing, growing a lot of opportunities. All this home really needs now is a new perspective and a spectacular makeover. It's been three days today and I have everything I need to know. So let's sit down and talk numbers. We're hoping to grab the property for 100,000 flat. I can technically qualify for a first time home buyer incentive, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to put in 30% down, which is $30,000. So technically, if I wasn't to renovate this and simply bought it to rent it out, my out of pocket expense to buy and acquire the property would have really just been $30,000. 30K to buy a house insane right i've also sent some pictures to my contractors and we have the entire makeover not just in my head but actually on paper so our goal is to finish this project within two months the total renovation cost comes right about fifty thousand dollars you might be thinking that's a lot of zeros and you'll be right so here let's break it down together we are starting right from the guts with the way the basement looked I can tell the place has been vacant for quite a while, so I'm putting $10,000 aside for a possible pesticide and mold remediation. This will take care of any minor repairs or any surprises that come along the way. And let's face it, there's always surprises. The electrical panel needs to be upgraded. This home was built in 1940s and I'm not risking any fire. And yeah, these wires do not look safe at all. So we're upgrading our breaker box from 30 amp to 100 amp and replacing every single electrical wire. Cost $10,000. The water fixtures do look old, but I haven't noticed any damaged pipes or drainage lines. So we are only accounting for minor repairs. Cost $2,000. The very few windows still remaining at the house look pretty original. Replacement cost about $5,000. Almost every single wall ceilings need to be replaced. Properly drywalled, mudded, and painted. The total cost comes to $8,000. Just because we're not finishing the basement, like at all. Kitchen, I would usually try to just refinish. This one, not really. So we're changing that with new cabins, new quartz countertops, $6,000. And if you didn't notice, the house does not come with any appliances. So appliances another three thousand dollars i'm trying my best to save the flooring but the ones that have to go have to go mainly the bedroom and the small washroom so new flooring new trims we are looking at about two thousand dollars for weatherproofing and exterior we are lucky to have a brand new roof that's the only thing brand new in the house the exterior panels will try to refinish and paint cost two thousand dollars total cost forty eight thousand dollars we already factored in any waste removal, changing doors, new lighting fixtures, or all of that small stuff. But I'm gonna put in another 2,000 for any overhead. Total cost, $50,000. Our goal is to finish renovations within two months. So with our mortgage and closing costs, I'm factoring in another $15,000. Not just the interest payment, but if you actually watch my listings, we do some excellent marketing. We do a lot of campaigns, ads, social media stuff, and all kind of things. So, $30,000 for down payment, $50,000 for renovation, and $15,000 for closing costs. Brings my total right about $95,000. So, just under that $100,000 out of pocket expense. With not a lot of comparables, it's hard to predict the potential sale price, but with our research, we're hoping for a sale price of $250,000 leaving us with a little bit of profit. So I had my accountant, my handyman, my contractors, everyone was on board, ready to go. 
until we ran into a problem. A problem with financing. Yeah, financing. Turns out the lot has been rezoned commercially. Because if we get a residential loan, we technically are buying a commercial piece of land. And if we get a commercial loan, we technically have a residential property sitting on that commercial land. There's a clash between both. Which means we can't get financing on it. Like, imagine if I wrote an unconditional offer out of desperation. I would have been on the hook for the entire purchase price. See, now that I think about it, it all makes sense why this property came back on the market in the first place. Now, don't get me wrong, it's probably valued a little bit more being a commercial land sitting on such a great location. You see, in an ideal world, I would have enough capital to snap up this home with cash and still have enough left over for all the renovations. But the world of real estate is a dance of numbers, strategies, and sometimes a pinch of tough decisions. Despite my vision for this property, despite the potential I saw in every nook and cranny, I'm having to walk away from this deal. It's a decision I've not made lightly. Believe me. Success isn't always straightforward. There's twists, turns, and moments we have to recalibrate. And that's okay. This particular deal might not be in the cards for us, but I want you to know this journey is far from over. We're still on the lookout for that perfect canvas, that hidden gem, an opportunity that truly aligns with our vision and resources.